All right, hello, welcome to the very first ever review of Palooza for the test that is tomorrow. I wasn't able to get the uh, Zoom video recorded and posted, but I think this could be good uh, even for the people who came to the Zoom video. All right, so first thing, the Phillips curve, uh, we have four different situations. Remember the long run Phillips curve is the natural rate of unemployment here, okay, which is of course 5%. Okay, that's the long run Phillips curve. Well, if we start at equilibrium right here, and aggregate demand increases, we'll go up to here, and we'll end up in an expansion situation. High inflation, low unemployment, all right? The opposite, if we have a decrease in consumption, stronger dollar, decrease in government spending, we end up in a recession, a decrease in aggregate demand, and we end up over here. Okay. Well, what if both unemployment and inflation both increase? We end up in Jimmy Carterville, stagflation roller coaster right here. Uh, it's not a happy place, right? Going right is bad here because this represents unemployment. High unemployment high inflation, that is a decrease in aggregate supply, stagflation, also known as cost push inflation. And then here, improvements in technology, uh, lower corporate taxes, lower costs of labor, oil, other commodities, give us a sp supply side economics. So this is a happy place, an increase in aggregate supply, Think about over here, Ronald Reagan, supply side economics. This will get you 495 electoral votes or whatever he got, or maybe even 500. Okay, these are the four different events. Of course, right here, that's equilibrium. Uh, note that in the long run, the Phillips curve is always gonna come back to the long run Phillips curve. That's why it's called the long run Phillips curve. Just like the long run aggregate supply, we always end up back at long run aggregate supply. No matter where <coughs> unemployment is, it's gonna be drawn like a magnet to the long run Phillips curve, which we're gonna consider as 5%. Okay, all right. Uh, loanable funds market we talked a little bit about uh, in our class. I don't know if you can see me over here. Let me move the camera a wee bit. All right, and the loanable funds market is savings, is the supply of loanable funds, okay? Demand for loanable funds is the loans, and then we have a real interest rate, and we have a real interest rate because these deposits and loans are over an extended period of time, unlike the money market, which is, uh, you know, just overnight lending, okay? This is, can be five, 10, 15, 20, 30 years. You're gonna have a lot of, uh, change in price level over that time. So we need to use a real interest rate. Remember the real interest rate equals nominal rate minus inflation. Okay. Just know this. And if I give you the real rate and inflation, you just find the nominal rate. If I give you the nominal rate and inflation, you go eight minus five equals three. I think you can handle it. It's got to know the equation. The other important thing about the loanable funds market is the crowding out effect. So demand for loanable funds comes from three different groups, households, buying cars, homes, et cetera, uh, businesses, expanding, buying new capital equipment, building new factories, et cetera, and government bodies, okay? So crowding out involves the government borrowing money from the loanable funds market. So if there's an increase in government spending that causes a budget deficit, and then the government has to borrow money from the loanable funds market, that put, puts pressure on demand for loanable funds, increasing the real interest rate. Okay, well that higher interest rate, is gonna have a negative impact on interest sensitive parts of the economy. It's 
specifically consumption and investment. Okay? But wait, there's more. I dropped my iPad, so I'm very thankful I didn't break it. So you're gonna be looking at the ceiling for a couple seconds while I move it over here just to be extra careful. But if I had prepared, I would have had a joke for you. Review of Palooza. Premiering tonight. All right, the foreign exchange market. All right. Uh, I've got the US dollar and I have the pesos over here. Here is our foreign exchange market. This is where all the currencies are. Okay. All right. All the currencies are in the foreign exchange. That's where the supplies are. All right. What are the things that cause appreciation? Taste and travel. High interest rates because foreigners want to put their money and get a big return on it. Recession. Lower income because if Americans have less income, talking about America's currency, they're not going to be able to spend it on foreign goods and travel to those countries. And then deflation, the lower price level, is going to make our goods more attractive. Okay, when I talk about travel here, this means people traveling to the United States. So let's take a look at uh, the U.S. dollar versus the peso. Spring break, a lot of wild and crazy college kids are going to Mexico, what's going to happen? Well, there's going to be an increase in the demand for the peso. So what's going to happen here is you get Harry college kid over here and his girlfriend, Sarah, okay, um, and others, okay, not just the two of them, but they're going to put U.S. dollars into the foreign exchange market. That increases the supply of US dollars, causing depreciation. And they are demanding pesos, okay, to go to Mexico. You need pesos to go to Mexico, okay? And it's vice versa. It, what I want you to remember is that supply of one increases and demand for the other increases. So it's really just a matter of figuring out which one is gonna have an increase in demand, and then the other one has an increase in supply. All right, let's say that the U.S. Uh, supplies wheat and soybeans, and they export them to Mexico, which probably happens, okay? Well, what's gonna happen? There's gonna be an increase in the demand for the U.S. dollar by the Mexicans causing appreciation of the U.S. dollar, okay? And there's gonna be an increase of supply of pesos in the foreign exchange market, causing depreciation. Winning team, appreciation, losing team. Must be the case, okay? All right, we can also argue that there's gonna be a decrease in supply of the U.S. dollar in the foreign exchange market and a decrease in demand as long as we're looking at it, this one's appreciating, right? Increase in demand causes appreciation along with a decrease in supply. Here, increase in supply causes de depreciation and then a decrease in demand. If I had my druthers, I would rather you just think of it as increase in demand for the one, increase in supply of the other, okay? Know your determinants of long run aggregate supply, private capital investment, quantity and quality of the labor force, new technology, education and research, healthcare and well-being, people saving more money, and then the things that are gonna really have a negative impact on long run aggregate supply, natural disasters, uh, political unrest, insurrections, if I will, um, and now, don't forget about the business cycle. It's Review of Palooza. It's not Perfection Palooza. Review of Palooza tells me we're going to have the business cycle like this, going up. This is expansion. Then we hit a peak. Then we have recession. Then we get down and we have a trough. And then we have expansion again, peak. Not very big recession there. 
know the order of things. Expansion, peak, recession, trough, expansion, peak, recession, trough, trough. Okay, so know what comes after a trough, expansion. Okay, uh, I want you to do well. Congratulations to the soccer team. Two to one victors. Got it from a very reliable source. Okay, so thank you for that information. And I bet the volleyball team did great as well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your senior night. And just do your best, all right? I want you to do well, okay? That's why I did. Review of Palooza 1. Actually, it needs a Roman numeral, right? Because anything important needs to have a Roman numeral, right? Super Bowls, Kings, uh, Popes, and Review of Palooza, one. That's it. My iPad is about to die. So I better hit the button and say goodnight.